have found the total surface matrix for our truss structure, let's move on to solve for the forces and displacements at the nodes. So this was the truss. I had three elements, element one, element two, and element three. And I had three nodes. This is node one, node two, and node three. Node one is uh, bounded in the y direction, so it doesn't move in the y direction. As a result, I have a F1Y there. Node 3 is fixed in both directions, so I will have F3Y and F3X. And node 2 has these external forces. F2Y or F2X is 0 and F2Y is minus 100 because it's in the negative, X, the negative Y direction. However, I don't know the D2X and D2Y and here what I don't know or are the reaction forces what I know is that D3X is equal to D3Y is equal to 0 and here I know that D1Y is equal to 0 because it can't move in the Y direction but I don't know D1X what I know is that F1X is equal to 0 the boundary conditions and then I found these uh, EA over L, and these are the properties that I'm going to be using for this example. The local surface matrix for a single truss element. And we found this total surface matrix for the entire structure of the truss that we found previously. So I can use this matrix to form the matrix formation here. Here's the uh, global nodal forces. Let's just put it here. And here is the global nodal displacements. And they're related by this stiffest matrix. If you remember from before, we said that the stiffest matrix relates the nodal forces to nodal displacements. It's now time to populate these vectors with the known and unknown boundary conditions and forces at the nodes that we showed here. So the knowns and unknown boundary conditions uh, and forces and displacements are uh, shown in here. I can put them in that matrix and I can come up with this notation. So I know that F1X is 0, F3X is 0, or actually this is F2X, and F2Y is equal to minus 100. I know that D1Y is 0 and D3Y or D3X and D3Y are also 0. But I don't know D1X, D2X, D2Y and I don't know F1Y, F3X and F3Y. These are the reaction forces and those are the nodal displacements that I'm looking for. So I have a 6 equations and 6 unknowns which I can solve either through matrix algebra or writing a MATLAB code or Python, whatever language. Uh, you're comfortable with and solve for these unknowns. So if I solve for them I'll end up with these numbers uh, from the boundary conditions I know that these are true these, these two F2X and F2Y were the external forces and F1X was again uh, known from the uh, fixed or, or boundary condition at node 1 what I didn't know was F1Y and F3Y and F3X. And F, F2Y, if you look, is minus 100. And if I sum F3Y and F1Y, so F1Y plus F3Y is equal to 50 plus 50 is equal to 100, which is what we expect from equilibrium uh, through static or statics that we studied in mechanical engineering. So that is true. And then we know that D1Y is 0 and D3Y and D3X are 0 because of the boundary conditions. And these forces or, or these displacements are um, given to me from my MATLAB code for the nodal displacements. Now knowing that, um, I can come here and I can say well, I had the local surface matrix for each truss element, right? Written like this, 2 times 10 to the 9. 
1, 0, minus 1. This is a 4 by 4 matrix. And I had this relationship between the local nodal forces and local nodal displacements, right? And this one would be uh, F1, X1, F1, Y1, which have their uh, basically hats on top of them, F2X1 and F2Y1. But like we said before, this term and this term are zero. So I can rewrite this equation back it to its original form, F1X1 and F2X1, the only non-zero forces that uh, we are expecting from the bar or the truss is equal to A over L, but I've taken the A to the left-hand side and I've written 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1, and this is the lo local nodal displacements, the one that we're familiar with. It's a 2 by 2 matrix. A truss element mu must also be in equilibrium, so F1x plus F2x should be uh, equal to 0. And as a result, we can just pick one of the nodal forces, like F2x at node 1, and divide it by the A that we have in here. It would be EA, EL, or E over L times minus 1, 1, D1x, D2x. And how does that work? Is that I found this force would be this row of the matrix multiplied by this vector. So this is basically the second row of that matrix. E over L is the constant here, and this vector is exactly copied there. Now I know that F2x1 over A is the stress from the definition of stress, and E over L times minus 1, 1, and the vector of the displacements, local displacements, give me the stress. However, I don't know the local nodal forces. Like I said, these are or no, local nodal displacements. And I don't know them. So what I do is that I use a transformation matrix to find them. So D1x1, D1y1, D2x1, D2y1 are equal to uh, this to transformation matrix, T multiplied by the global displacements that I found earlier. And here, these are those values. But I only want D1x1 and D2x1 because I know that this and that are going to be zero. So D1x1 is equal to this row, the first row of the matrix times the entire vector. And D2x1 is equal to multiplying the third row of the matrix by the vector. So I find this relationship between the local nodal displacements and the global nodal displacements. And I can put that in here and find this equation. So in order to find the stresses inside the elements of a truss, I use this equation E over L is the Young's modulus of the length of the bar and the cross-section is actually buried in this term, stress, minus 1, 1. This is a 1 by 2 row matrix. And this is a 2 by 4 matrix. And this is a 4 by 1 vector. As a result, it will give me a 1 by 1, which is a scatter. So I can use that for every element uh, in the truss. All I need to do is to make sure that what nodes are used for each element. So for example, for node 2, if I go back to my original uh, model here, node 2, I would use the uh, global nodal displacements of nodes 2 and 3. So if I go back to the slide here, instead of that, I would use D2XY, D2YY, D3XY, D3YY, or D3Y. Uh, basically, let me say that again, D1x, or D2x, D2y, D3x, and D3y here for the second element. And so on and so forth, and using that, I get these values for the stresses on uh, each element of the truss structure that I showed before.